Hello, I'm Lawrence Chard. Welcome to the Chard Coin and Bullion Dealer YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you something from our Black Museum and the mainly fake sovereigns. And uh, there's a whole box full here. It says this way up on them. What happens if I open the box and that's upside down? Hmm, okay. Ready to open the box? As they used to say on a, a very old TV show. And we've got all sorts in here. Uh, this makes me laugh. Somebody's labeled this fake George overstock. That kind of implies that we'd have a normal stock of fake George sovereigns, which is just totally ridiculous. But um, I understand what it means. Um, makes me fire. Now we've got trade one, well, that's logical. Third one up, trade one, well, what's going? Ah, trade two, that's interesting. We've got a couple of quintuple sovereigns, fake. A couple of double sovereign, fake. Uh, an odd half of in R2. What have we got? Space 3. Somebody's doubled these up for some reason. I don't know. Filling out the space. Uh, no number on that. These are all half sovereigns. And space 4. Okay. Now they're all the notes and stuff. Some of these include night on test report. Um, and they, uh, we use a night on XRF machine to um, check the metal content because it, it's a good clue. It's not an absolute, um, but if the metal content is wrong, you can safely conclude it's fake. If the metal content is right, then you have to go back to humanize human brain and do it the the original but best way. So I wanted to pick on today for, well, on this one, I've got a number of double sovereigns that are um, quite laughable. Now, I don't know how easily we can see these on on the video and whether you can see they're very shiny and look like they've been polished uh, but they're probably almost how they were when they were made in the factory in dubai or somewhere else and um, they're quite entertaining so the first one is a let's have a look should be is an 1887 queen victoria jubilee head uh, i'm not going to go into too much detail on this about how we know it's a fake but all the things to look for we will show you some uh, some stills of of these coins as we go through them so 1887 queen victoria jubilee nothing totally remarkable there uh, and let's have a look at the next one the next one is 1911 and that should be george v and yes it is george v almost seemingly obvious that it actually i don't know that one looks slightly different, but these four look like they're all from the same workshop. But what's interesting about this, um, this 1911 Georgia Perth um, is that stamped on it there, 21 CT. So probably made in, um, in I don't know, maybe Beirut or maybe in, um, in Dubai to sell to tourists. Um, or for like wedding coins, for Indian weddings and things like that. So the next one is 1887 again, but this one has got George V on and he didn't start coming to the throne until 1910 and his first coins were dated 1911. So normally George V double sovereign would be dated 1911. This is 1887. And what's more, this has got a little stamp on it that says 21CT. Now another George V, 1887, and this one says 22C on it. These are obvious, or should be obvious to anybody that they can't possibly be genuine. Although, believe it or not, you get some people who think, oh, it's a rare mule, an extremely rare coin, it must be worth millions. And of course, they're deluding themselves. That makes this little collection kind of fun because it, it seems so silly to put uh, the wrong head on the coin. Um, there are reasons this could be done. Um, one theory, and I don't think anybody knows the fact, is that some counterfeiters make a coin, that, a copy of a coin that doesn't actually exist. And the reason for this is that they can't then be accused of counterfeiting. Um, I did a quick count before we started, and uh, where did we come to? Um, in these days, there were a total of 281 coins. Uh, most of them are sovereigns. Uh, there are some, the next most common are half sovereigns, and then there are some 
double self wins and some quintuple self wins that we've seen. In total, there's an equivalent of about 378 self wins in there. And when, um, when I looked at this block a couple of months ago, uh, I did a quick calculation and there was uh, over £90,000 worth of, um, of gold in there, just the intrinsic value or scrap value. I've just done a recalculation today and sovereigns are near enough £378 um, intrinsic value. So the total uh, scrap value of this lot is about £108,000. And they're just sitting there waiting to be melted. But before we do that, it needs somebody like me to just go through and yeah, melt, 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 melt. And uh, there's even one genuine coin in there because uh, I think our daughters have looked at it and thought, oh, this looks a bit funny. And another thing we do with things like this, in, in most cases, we take a photograph of fake coins. So this one happens to be the one in here that we know is genuine. It's an 1893 Queen Victoria old head half sovereign. It's in minty condition, it's very close to, to minty. It's possibly why Juliana pulled it out as being uh, slightly suspect. Uh, while I'm at it, I've got a near diamond magnet here, which is quite handy for testing if there's any iron content or um, things that shouldn't be in there. And there's only a few coins in here, that's actually quite a weak attraction. But we've got here three uh, imitation 1910 London Mint, Edward the Seventh half sovereigns, and they all look very, very similar. So probably made in the same factory. Who made them and what reason? I don't know. But um, they're interesting. One thing I haven't said here um, is um, why do we produce videos like this? Uh, we're not selling anything in the video. I'm not going to make any money out of um, out of it. And the, the simple answer is for many, many years, and it's about 60 years now, um, I've been helping collectors, helping investors, and advising them. And I quite enjoy talking about coins, about bullion, about gold, having my uh, encyclopedia knowledge. <laughs> uh, but yeah, over 60 years, I have actually learned quite a few things, and I do have a lot of experience. Uh, you may think, oh, there are lots of reputable um, coin and bullion dealers out there, and yeah, sure there are. But in some cases, certain bullion dealers' names pop up time and time again. You know, I don't want to upset the dealers in particular. They're not dealers I um, speak to or have any, um, uh, or have much respect for. But occasionally we'll see a fake from a very good, reputable, respectable dealer and somebody who I do respect. And in that case, I'll often um, give them a call, send them an email, um, send them a photograph just to alert them that they've missed something. When that happens, you, they're usually quite happy and grateful that we've pointed it out. All this lot, or most of them at any rate, are fairly recent additions. We see fake sovereigns and other coins uh, every single week, usually or often on a daily basis. If we get a day when we haven't seen a fake, hey, what's happening out there. It then comes time, things build up and eventually when we get to a few spare minutes, somebody like me has to go through and decide what are we keeping, what, what's educational, what's informative um, and what we can just scrap and turn back into money. A surprising thing I suppose or maybe an amazing thing is that a lot of these coins have come from people who thought they were genuine and they bought them as genuine and it's it's rather worrying just how many of these coins have actually come from supposedly knowledgeable dealers. And um, I'm guessing that most of those dealers don't have a black museum like this because they, uh, they probably can't tell the difference anyway. <laughs> um, I think um, that's about it. Um, I don't know if anybody's looked at the t-shirt and wondering why, we've, why I've got this t-shirt on. Proudly claiming to be the UK's number nine um, bullion dealer. But hopefully, if you can read the small print down there, it actually spells it out because there's at least eight of our competitors out there all claiming to be the UK's number one coin and bullion dealer. Somebody did ask me why I was wearing this, but the quick answer is you wouldn't want me doing this video topless, would you? Um, and um, that's a scary thought, isn't it? So I'd better conclude there. That's all, folks. Bye for now.